Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I've got an overview of your gas boiler heating system. This one specifically is a Crane 100 series boiler. This is going to be the first video on a new playlist all about boilers, maintenance, replacing parts, anything you need to know. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. First you got your nameplate on the boiler itself. This one is Crane 100 series gas boiler, model number 100W-120P, natural gas. Uh, BTUs is going to basically give you the size of the unit. Got minimum relief valve capacity, maximum working pressure, some instructions on lighting and shutdown. Down here near the gas valve, you got another label here. This is from uh, Honeywell Lightright, more lighting instructions for the pilot. And right over here, we've got one more label. This is the schematic wiring diagram for the 100 series Honeywell. This one is the L8148G. And that's for the system controls, which is going to be running your pumps and telling the burners when to turn on. First, we'll look at the water part of the system. We've got the city water supply coming in here, cold water. We have a shutoff valve. This here is a backflow preventer. It's essentially a check valve. doesn't allow water to flow back that way into the city water supply. Or closest thing is going to be your sink, where you might get drinking water from. It's a lot of dirty components in here. You don't want any of that backflowing into your water supply. Next, you got here the pressure regulating valve or pressure reducing valve. It's going to dial down the, the high city water supply pressure to a pressure that the system can handle. After that, we've got an expansion tank here. This is going to be filled with some water and air, and that allows for changes in the pressure when the temperature of the water goes up or down. This is going to allow for expansion, contraction of this bladder here. And it'll keep a nice steady pressure within the system for the water pressure. And we've got another shutoff valve. And then you're going to have a circulator pump to, for each zone. Now the older pumps, they're a lot bigger. You had to oil them. This one is maintenance free. This newer style. You have your electricity running to it, so the controller is going to tell that pump when to run. You have that for each zone. You have a different uh, style here and a third one here. Right here we have pressure relief valve. This one is a 30 psi pressure relief valve. So that means if the pressure of the water inside the system goes above 30, that's going to open the valve and drain some water out. You might have this pipe going to a floor drain. Here I have a bucket. And as you can see, you know, when these get old, they do drip water. You're always going to have this gauge here showing your temperature and pressure. Temperature will always be somewhere between 100 and 200 degrees, depending on the system and if the burners are running. If this were the summer, it would be down to, with just the pile light, it would be down to 120 or as low as 100 degrees. This one is steady at about 180 right now. It's been running recently. Pressure on this system is always around 14, 15 PSI. With the pressure relief from the system, it typically doesn't read any less than 10 PSI. So if you drain some water out to replace a component, you'll see that pressure drop to about 10. I don't usually see it go lower. I also don't see the pressure ever go above 20 or so. That pressure relief valve is for 30 PSI. So if the pressure of the system did get too high, and the pressure relief valve would open and drain some of the water. For each zone that you have, for heat, you have a pipe going up to that zone with a circular pump on it, and then you have one return pipe going back to the boiler. You most likely have one of these air vents right on top of the boiler. If there's any air in the system, this will scoop the air out and vent it. On mine, we also have Those air vents up on top of each zone pipe there. You might also have those at the corner of your radiators upstairs. Then you'll see on your pipes here, you'll have drain valves and shutoff valves. So if you need to do any maintenance on the system, you can isolate all those pipes upstairs with all the water, close these valves, and then you'll have very little water to actually drain out of the system for what you're working on. If we follow any of these pipes up, see we have check valves 
Most check valves allow water to flow only when the circular pump is pushing the water through. So that will isolate each zone. You won't get heat in zones that you don't want heat in. And if you leave your pilot light on during summer, keeping the water warm in the boiler, you won't have any of that warm water traveling upstairs in the summer. Over here, we're in the basement zone. This is hot water, baseboard radiator. If we take this back, you can see that there's radiating fins on the copper pipe. And these are in sections that are soldered together. And if you do need to extend or shorten radiator, if you're doing work around your house, adding addition, whatever, those are just individual fins. These come off and you're left with just that plain copper pipe. Take a quick look at the power and controls. Here we have the main power coming in, 120 volt, to a main shutoff, and there it's going to the different boxes here. One's going to the control panel. Three wires coming down for the three thermostats for each of the three zones, each going to one of these boxes here, where it's going to tell a circular pump to run. We have another wire coming from that box back over to here, and this is where it's going to be sending the signal over to the burners till the burners turn on. Take a look at this box here. Relay is just power coming in. Got a transformer. It's a thermostat coming in here. Got a relay. So the thermostat calls for heat. It's the low voltage power for that. Switches the relay and sends power to run the circulator pump. And if you take a look at this one, this one is uh, set up with all the controls you need and for running one zone with one circulator pump. Those other boxes are extra ones for each extra zone. And this one is all described here in their wiring diagram. So again, you've got a transformer, relay, and then the switch for sending that signal over to your burner. Finally, we have the gas supply coming from the city supply here. We have a shutoff valve. This comes down here to your burner controls. We have on position, it's a normal position. We have off if you're gonna be turning off for servicing or if you turn that off for the summer. Your pilot light, so if it's off, you need to get a light again. You're gonna use that position. The small silver tube here is the gas line for the pilot light. This wire wrapping around it, that's for the thermocouple. The thermal couple is going to sense temperature at the pilot light. So if the pilot light were to blow out, it's going to sense that it's not on and turn off the gas. And then you have this larger pipe here. That's gas pipe that's going to supply gas to the burners when heat is called for. Now this panel easily comes right off. And there you can see the pilot light. It's burning nice and cleanly, bright blue. That pilot light should be at about a 45 degree angle. So when you call for heat, that's the proper angle for lighting the burners. All right, I've got a bright light here. See when you point a light at that, flame almost disappears. You can tell it's burning very cleanly. Then here's all your burners. You can see some debris on top. I'm gonna need to clean those. You can also tell when the burners are on, you can tell that those are dirty. You'll see some, uh, some red glowing bits of, uh, you know, that rusty junk that needs to be cleaned off. Then you can see, look up a little further, you see the bottom of the cast iron boiler. It's very similar to those old fashioned steam radiators, built in sections and bolted together. So the thermostat called for heat, so the burners start up there, turn on high, and you can tell the burner's a little bit dirty, you can see those burning red metal flakes on top of the burners. And it's really just rust that's falling from the boiler up above. Finally, you have the byproducts of combustion, so you need the vent. So here we have uh, an unpowered vent. 
this is an inefficient older boiler, so you have a lot of heat still in those combustion products. They need to vent up and out of the chimney. And so that will naturally draft with the heat. If you have a newer system that's gonna have a fan, might be PVC and go directly out the side of your building instead of up and out the chimney. That's the rough overview of your hot water boiler system. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I got a lot more of these videos coming and thanks for watching.